2017 Hyundai Tucson. We're going to do the brakes today on the front, pads and rotors. First thing we're going to do, put on some gloves and then uh, we'll go ahead and get some tools out and get started. All right, let's do this. Got the jack and jack stands out. Head over to the toolbox. Step one is going to be to remove the wheel. I've got first person perspective and then I've got the outsider perspective going. Okay, now that we've uncovered our brakes, let's grab some light. Step two, now that we've got our wheel off, is we're going to come down here and do a little inspection. First thing I notice, you see this rust here? The feels got, vehicle has 70,000 miles on it. These are the original rotors. Overall, the surface material is not too bad. The rotor wear is not too, too bad. I can feel a little bit of a lip here, so I know that they are wearing a little bit. I'm gonna come over here to this inspection window, shine a flashlight in there, take a look at my pad material. We're also going to inspect our control arm bushings. We're going to inspect the inner tie rod boot. We're gonna look at our brake line and make sure that our ABS wires are all intact. We're going to look around at the fender covers and make sure nothing is out of place. We're going to look at our CV boot, inner and outer, and make sure that nothing is leaking. We're going to check our sway bar end link. Overall, everything looks pretty good. But since we're going into winter, we're going to replace the rotors with coated rotors, and everything's going to be brand new, 70,000 miles. So step two is done. Step three is we're going to remove the caliper, and we're going to hang it up. You can't leave a caliper hanging by the weight of the hose. So we're going to use this tool right here. We use this tool right here, which are just these little flexible hanging things. But you can use a... a coat hanger, a bungee cord, there's any number of options that can work. The main thing is to just get the caliper hanging. The caliper has two bolts. One of them on the outside is a 14 millimeter, and then the inside is a 17 millimeter. Sometimes this is really tight and is difficult to pull off. So I've brought a pry bar out for case that's the case here it does not seem to be the case here so there. put them over there there we are caliper is hanging up on this and not by the weight of the hose we have now exposed the brake pads and the brake caliper bracket now it's time to pull off our pads first we're going to start by Removing these springs. And the pads themselves should just come right out. Whoa, definitely time. We can see the back of the rotor. There's two. 17 millimeter bolts. These bolts come off, this one and this one. 17 millimeter swivel impact socket from Snap-on. Okay. These are tight and they should be. Don't want these loose. So I'm going to go get a heftier tool. My dad was an auto mechanic back in the 1970s, what he used to call the bad old days. And he used to tell me, Ryan, don't ever take shit from a car. Just get it. Oh, doesn't fit. Okay. Well. Oh, 
Okay, here we are. Two caliper bracket bolts and the caliper bracket. The next step is to remove the rotor. But here's the problem, rotor's got these two little screws on it. Screws are put in by the factory to make sure that the rotor stays there while it's moving down the assembly line. Don't necessarily need to keep the screws. So there's a few different ways to pull these screws out. If you try to grab a big screwdriver and turn them, might not have some success. So this tool is called an impact driver. Take a Phillips bit and you put it in there. And when you push this in the slot, take a hammer, bang on the hammer, and it'll turn the screw. At the moment you hit it, it's pushed all the way forward. So you're not gonna strip the screw most likely, and it's going to remove that screw pretty well. The other thing you can do is just use a nut driver with a number three bit, push on the back to make sure you don't strip the screw. Once you've loosened it up, that little screw comes right out. Two screws. Do it again. There we go. Two wax came right out. Rotor should come right off. Sometimes it's helpful to. grab a softer hammer and come from behind. Sometimes the rotor is a little bit of a booger to come off, so grab some rust penetrant. Let that sit for a few. Then I'm just gonna come in from the back side of the rotor like this. thousand miles that thing's really on there The next step in the process is we have to prepare the caliper bracket for the new pads. As you can see looking at the caliper bracket, this is the part where the pad slides back and forth on. And it's extremely unclean. It's full of old grease and full of debris. So this has got to be cleaned with the new set of pads. These little metal clips come right off. These things get replaced. You can replace these pins and boots and it usually is a good idea to inspect them at least and make sure that there's no tears. If there's any tears in these rubber boots, replace them ASAP. We're also gonna pull them out and re-lubricate them. It's actually pretty easy, so give it just a minute. I've taken the caliper bracket and I've put it into the bench vise. We're going to replace the metal clips that go on it. Only tool we need here is a wire brush because we do have to clean this caliper bracket in order to get these new things to fit on there perfectly. Let's get to it. So this is actually really easy. This thing just, I should set up a separate camera for this one, huh? Sounds like a whole lot of work. You know how much work it is to set up different cameras for different shots? Let's see if you can just get this. Can you get this on this camera? Camera, can you get this? All we gotta do is we just pull it off. That's it. I don't have to set up an extra camera for that, do I? You can see that, but yeah, I just pulled it off. Take our wire brush, take the spot where this thing just was. 
see all the dust coming up? That's why I put on these safety glasses. Alright, we'll grab a new clip from the new packet of clips. It's just a little piece of spring steel. If you buy the cheap pads at the auto parts store, they won't give you the clips. Always buy the pads that give you the clip. Like a glove. Flip it upside down. I'm gonna do the same to the other side. Let's go in for a close-up shot. Here's the old ones we just removed. And we put the new ones in their place. Real simple. So we've got the new hardware clips. That's where the pads ride. But the entire caliper slides back and forth on these pins. We have to pull these pins out and re-grease them. If you take this to a shop and you have them do a, a quick pad slap, they might not do this step. This step is very, very, very important. It's also very important to make sure you inspect these little boots because if these boots go bad, even the tiniest little pinhole, if they get dry rotted, you'll get some water in there and especially up north where we have all the salt, these things will rot very bad and this pin will seize in place. And when this pin seizes in place, you're gonna have a bad time. Removing these pins is actually really easy. We're gonna just grab it, spin it, and pull it out. Now you see that goo that's on there? We gotta replace that goo. You have to use a silicone-based lubricant for this. Do not try to use a regular grease because it will eat that rubber boot and you're gonna have a bad time. I also want to point out one other thing about these. One of these has a little rubber stopper on the end, the other one does not. Make sure you get these back in the correct place. So we have to clean out this little bore where the pin goes. I find that a drill bit, if I just take it in there and spin it by hand while scraping the sides ever so gently, is perfect for moving all that old grease. I'm just gonna spin that in there. All that old grease comes right out. Rip off the grease on a rag. Nasty. We're going to completely clean those bores and we're going to completely clean those pins. I'm going to use a little bit of solvent and some rags. I'll be right back. I'm not going to film that. I've taken it outside. I've sprayed it out with some bright clean. And I've rolled up some shop towels and spinning them in there. And it's to the point where the inside is just perfectly clean. It looks like some fresh clean metal and that's what you want. Next up is the pins the boots themselves, and then we'll re-lubricate them with some fresh silicone grease, and then we'll be ready to put our pads back in it. Now, we've got everything cleaned up. We've got the pins clean, we've got the boots clean, the boots are inspected, they're perfect shape. We have to put new lubricant on there. So let's talk about lubricant for a second. If you go to the auto parts store, you're gonna find products like this, brake parts lubricant. Remember, that's not the right stuff. <laughs> I know, isn't that fun? This is what you want. It's called Silglide. It's a silicone-based lubricant, and you need a silicone-based lubricant for those rubber boots to make sure those rubber boots don't go bad on you. If those rubber boots go bad on you, I've said it before, you're gonna have a bad time. Before I put the boots back on, I'm going to use the pin to go in there and just work it around a little bit. If you look closely at these pins, they have little channels 
where it's kind of looks like it's been shaved down a spot it's not perfectly round that is so grease can move forward and rearward Normally I'd use my finger for this, but this is the finger I'm using to turn on and off the camera. It's important that these pins are able to slide freely and they are feeling like a million bucks. They're feeling a lot better. They were kind of stiff when I first pulled them out because the grease was old and everything, but they're actually feeling great now. All right, a quick note about boot installation. Do You see that little ridge right there? The boot has to go up and fit onto that ridge. So it's not just enough that we push them in. We have to push them in far enough that that boot sits on that ridge. Sometimes we've got to spin them a little bit. Man, these things are feeling great. I'm feeling real good about this brake job. All right, now, I've just done the caliper bracket, but before you saw, I was working on trying to pull this rotor off, and that rotor was stuck in place. I tried using heat, I tried using a pry bar, I tried using multiple hammers, it was not coming off. But here's what I did. I took the Gibbs brand, a little bit of rust penetrant. There's any number of rust penetrants that work. This is one of my absolute favorites, but there's also plenty other that are on the market. You don't need to use this. I turned the rotor, I sprayed it all around the back, everywhere where uh, it was being held in place by the rust. And then I went and I worked on the caliper bracket over there. I came back, two wax came right off. That's how you do it. Sometimes if you're having problems getting a stuck part off, hit it with the rust penetrant, come back in 10 minutes. Go do something else, come back, boom, it's done. Sometimes if I have an automotive part that's a little hard to get out, digging, trying to get an alternator or a stud or something that's way buried, I like to pick up the part and hold it over my head. Like I just harvested an organ. Kalima! <laughs> Got it. But let's take a look while I have it off at the rust on the edge. And let's take a look at the rust that's on the inside. This is why I bought coated rotors. The rotors that I just bought are fully powder coated and that includes all these areas that were rusted in place and this little rust ridge, that's what was preventing me from pulling it off. You See the way it's rusted right there? If I can hold it in the light just right. That was holding it in place. The new rotor, being a coated rotor, won't have that problem. So next time we go to do these pads in another 70,000 miles, we won't have the same problem. Can of brake cleaner, gonna clean it off, and then we're ready to start with parts. Optional step, but if you live in the north like I do, we're going to use a little bit of anti-seize and we're going to put it in the threads here. We're going to put it on a few various threads down there and a few various places just to make sure we don't have things rusting in place next time. If you live in South Florida, disregard this step. You don't need it. Or maybe you do, I don't know. I've got the new rotor and you can see it's got a powder coating all over it, and that includes all the way inside here. This is what was preventing me from pulling the old rotor off. I'm not going to have that problem again. If you live anywhere where it rusts, where your cars rust, where they put salt on the roads, get a powder coated rotor. It's worth the upgrade. All right, I'm going to put the caliper bracket back on now. Up, get one started. 
second one. Get it started. I've gotten them started by hand. We'll finish it. Step is to put the pads in place. Line it up, get one started. Got my new pads, so let's find a match. If you notice, these two have squealers that are on the opposite side. So let's grab the appropriate one. This is one. And this is one. So these will be for the opposite side. Yeah, I guess it was time to do this. These are going to go in here like this. But the first thing we have to do is make sure that we have some lubricant for the pads to ride on. the one I said not to use for the pins so we're not going to use the silk glide that wears away pretty quickly after some rain we are going to use this one we've gotten we've gotten the edges of the pads which is the part where they ride lubricated up but we're going to put just a little bit more here and here this is where the caliper sits. Same with here and here. Anywhere on the back of the pad, just going to put the slightest, slightest little bit of grease. We'll start with the inner one. There we go. Inner one is in place. Move to the outer one. There we go. Caliper bracket is in place. Everything's in place. Now I got my new pads in place. It's time to put the caliper back, except for that caliper piston is pushed all the way out to accommodate for the worn out pads. If we were to take this pad and this pad, place them here, you can see that the new pads are much wider. So we have to push that piston back. There's a number of ways to do that. This piston has to go all the way back into here. There are dedicated tools you can buy. You can buy something like this at an auto parts store for under 10 bucks, and it works pretty well. If you don't want to buy anything, just use a C-clamp. This one is from Lyle Tools, and it is my favorite, and it makes things very fast. So we are going to start with that, push the piston back, and we'll be, we will be ready to reinstall the piston. Reinstall the caliper. Plop it in there real quick. Put this tool in there. It's just that simple. You just squeeze this. It goes right back. Squeeze that. Flatly and evenly pushes that piston right back. Now, before I put the caliper back, going to take the new springs. Remember the old springs? We're going to take new springs. It came with the new pads. All right. Line 
everything up. Start everything by hand first. If we look in there, we can see there's just a little bit of a gap. What kind of lighting works better on that camera? Probably about there. So the first time we hit the brakes, it's going to extend that piston. It's going to take up that gap. So that's going to go away pretty quickly. I went inside the vehicle. I pushed on the brake about three times. And now this caliper is completely tight. The brake pads are right up against the rotor. Everything looks fantastic. started the car we're backing it out slowly Just pumping the brakes Make sure everything is intact works it seems good go for a little drive powder coating is going to wear away only in the spots where the brake pad touches it. Every other spot, in between the fins, on the hat, on the edge, everywhere else is powder coated. That'll look good even in the middle of the winter time.